This is episode number 10. My guest today teaches you the four C's for building a personal brand. Stay tuned. So the big question is how do ambitious people like us who grew up listening to the old advice of go to school, work hard for 40 years and retire when you're old, create a life today that is meaningful, abundant, healthy, and brings joy while also leading a life that is productive and full of achievement? That is the question, and this is the podcast that will help give you the answers that you're searching for. My name is Del Denny, and welcome to the Upgrade Your Life podcast. Welcome to the Upgrade Your Life podcast. I have Sarah Lind, a special guest today. A little background on Sarah. She helps personal brand businesses sales professionals step out from behind stuffy content and motivational quote memes to build an influential and intentional personal brand and grow it using simple social media and PR strategies. Also the host of the Social Scholars podcast. She's an Elon Musk super fan, an avid cycle bar reader and personal development and science book hoarder. Sarah, welcome to the Upgrade Your Life podcast. Sal, thank you so much for having me. I am really excited to be here. All right. Well, Sarah, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Yeah. So I help um, brand small businesses where it really makes sense for the owner to, like I said, step out from behind a logo, pretty brand colors, pretty stock photos, um, put down the motivational memes and really start to share their own face, um, their voice through videos and their own opinions, which all of that leads to the potential of getting judged by others, right? So I think a lot of times that's why it's harder to put yourself out there as a person. It's easier to do as a logo or um, just a, a brand that doesn't necessarily have a face. Um, but humans want to connect with other humans. And I always use the example of like, when you think about um, Apple, you always think about Steve Jobs, right? And his mm -hmm. story, and you think about the person behind the brand. But it's like Samsung. I don't know that I, I'm not as attached or loyal to that brand um, because uh, for me personally, I've gotten attached to this, the Steve Jobs story. Um, I think same thing with like Elon Musk. I mentioned earlier that I, I'm a huge fan of him. Um, and, you know, you, he's, he's the face of these companies. And I think that they're doing so well and they're so, um, people feel connected with them because they're seeing him. Um, another example is like Sarah Blakely with Spanx. Like I, who doesn't love like ladies love a good, like Spanx accessory. Um, but like, I feel like loyal and I'm into that brand because I love Sarah Blakely and her story of how she got started. And so that's the power of having your leader or if it's just you right now, that's the power of you putting yourself out there as people start to have that connection and feel super loyal and engaged with the brand because they feel engaged and connected with the person behind the brand. Personal branding. I, why is that important for the listeners? We have a lot of entrepreneurs. We have people that are uh, getting in the business. We have people just want to be, you know, better, you know, a better version of themselves. So why is personal uh, branding important to them? Sometimes people can think, oh, what does that mean? Does that mean like I'm an influencer? I don't know if I want to do that. Um, I don't want to be too self-promotional or narcissistic. And what I always say is that it's just your personal brand is really just your reputation, specifically your online reputation. And so, you know, if you're starting a new company and you need you know, funding potentially for this company. I've had real life stories where the more known person, not necessarily the better person, ended up getting that second round of funding because they were well known, because people saw them, they knew what they stood for. Um, it can also help you 
attract the right clients because you're putting out a certain vibe and you're going to get back the type of people that you really want to work with, which makes your whole life easier. Um, and there's this, there's this Grant Cardone quote that he always says, you know, best known is better than best. And we can sit around and perfect our idea, perfect our image, um, perfect our website, be the smartest person, but it doesn't matter if nobody knows that, right? So that's the, that's the advantage of putting yourself out there, maybe even before you're a hundred percent ready, but at least people can start to get to know you and connect with you, um, and are aware of you. You can't, you can't sell what people don't know that you have for sale, or you can't, um, you know, leverage your personal brand by, being on boards, being on um, podcasts or being guest speakers and that type of thing. If nobody knows you exist, no matter how good you are. For sure. I, I, I think about, you know, personal branding has a lot to do with reputation. And I spoke a little bit on that and it's about, well, what's the narrative around you? What's the narrative around your brand and whether you like it or not, whether you like personal branding or not, there's going to be a narrative around you there's going to be a narrative around your business. So uh, what can we do to help craft that narrative to control the story a little bit more to contrain, uh, excuse me, to control our our branding? What, what can we do to help with our personal brand to develop that, to cultivate it? That's a great point, Del, because yeah, we, what, like sitting here right now, whether you think you do or you don't, you do already have a personal brand. So when somebody goes, when you give out your business card and this, like Google digital age, people are going back to Google you. And if they don't see anything, that's all, that also tells a story, right? Um, So I talk, I talk about this recipe called my, my four secrets um, of building a standout personal brand. And they consist of creating compelling content, making meaningful connections, getting in front of the camera, which sometimes can be the hardest one. And then just showing up consistently. Like it is insane how much just being consistent will continue to, to put you further and further ahead. Um, even if you're not perfect all the time. Okay. I, I don't want to breeze past that. I really like that. Can we go through the four C's uh, maybe just a, a little bit more detail on what they are and maybe like a little strategy behind each one of them? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So, you know, I've, I've heard this quote that says, uh, visibility without value is just vanity. And so, you know, and I think that's what people are afraid of when one of the things that they're afraid of when they talk about putting themselves out there, they don't want to seem self-promotional. Um, well, you know, that doesn't happen if you're sharing value, um, making meaningful connections through your content. And so the first place I always start is your content. And I like to break it down into three categories. This just helps my brain know that when I'm looking on my Instagram feed or when I'm looking at my, my blog, I kind of know like, okay, what, what am I sharing? What have I shared too much of? What do I need to share more of? And those three types of content are connection content, value content, and promotion content. And it's important to have all three because you're using this personal brand. I'm assuming for business reasons, you have something to sell or you have a message to share, which ultimately is selling your idea, right? Having influence um, and getting people to get on board and buy into that message. So um, it's all selling at the end of the day. And so you need that promotion piece Um, But you also need to share value and then people also need to feel like they know you and that connection piece is so important to make sure that you weave in to your content strategy because that's the secret sauce that's going to make you stand out. So, you know, somebody can share 10 tips on how to build a successful business, right? I'm sure we've all seen all kinds of articles like that. But you have an opportunity to kind of stand out and show your unique energy and vibe and, um, and um, weave in your past stories and your opinions on that thing so that by the time it's 
by the time you share that, you've woven in value, but you also have told a story about a lesson learned or something, and nobody else will ever have that same story, the exact same way that you share it. You might be super serious um, and buttoned up and like well-researched, and somebody else might say the same thing, but have like a funny, um, humorous tone to it. You know, somebody might be, um, have like a dry sense of humor. It like all, like there's really nothing in this world that hasn't already been said, but how you say it and the stories that you pair with it really make you stand out to your people, right? Not everybody will necessarily resonate with that. And that's okay. Cause we're all different, but by you weaving those personal stories in, um, experiences, you're going to be able to connect with people, stand out, um, and I should say connect with the right people and stand out to them. I think a lot of people, and I, it's fascinating what you're saying here. I'm, I'm taking notes because in my own mind, I'm, I'm crafting my social media strategy as, as you're telling these things because this is gold right here. And I think a lot of people think about these big brands that are out there like Coca-Cola or you could say Oreos, and that they're, they're trying to just cater to everybody. But we live in a different marketing age where, like you said, we have to have our tribe. And, you know, when we find our tribe, you know, people that are, you know, just like us, you know, have our same, same humor, same uh, aspirations and whatnot. When you find your tribe that's like, like that, you know, people just jump on board with that. And that's, again, why personal branding is so important, isn't it? Oh my gosh. Yes. And so I hope this is okay to say, um, but there is a, a, a gal that I follow on Instagram um, I think I met her through an Amy Porterfield event and I have just been so impressed with the evolution of her personal brand and niching down exactly what you're saying, Dell. She helps. Um, she used to be like a manifestation coach educator. And I, I'm sure like there's, there's so many manifestation coaches, right? I see them all the time on Instagram. Um, she realized she like woven, woven to her like unique experiences, her past. And she's now a manifestation coach for strippers. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. So, um, and, and like, whatever you think about that, that's like up to you. But I think that she's a genius and like, being open about that and then like speaking to them because then it's like her experiences really resonate her the stories that she shares are like oh my gosh me too or like yes i have that challenge or you know what i mean and so she's not trying to attract maybe like you know stay at home moms and that's okay like she doesn't have to appeal to them because that's not her ideal audience but that's but the people that do follow her now are so excited and loyal and you know buying whatever she's selling because they really feel like she gets her because she's you know opened up about who she is and and develops this personal brand that resonates with them that's that's awesome I, and i think people are afraid to be vulnerable but that's when you're vulnerable and you show that side you know of you and and who you really are that, that really does attract the the right tribe the right crowd so to speak uh so content was the first part of the four c's what else what else can we add to that okay the connection part is so important too and this is this is something that is hard i think for all of us to just like remember in the moment when we have like this follower count this follower number in front of our face every time we open up social media um especially on Instagram, right? And it's, it, if you think about it, it, it doesn't matter if you have 10,000 people who are never going to like a single photo or who only click. It's so easy to click a heart on Instagram, right? Or it's so easy to like scroll through LinkedIn and hit the thumbs up like, um, but you would rather have a hundred loyal people who are into what you're saying, who engage with you, and that's hard though, when we're in this vanity myth. Um, yeah. And so we, we focus on these, these, um, whatever the opposite of non-meaning, I guess, non-meaningful connections, but it's so incredible how much 
success you can have with a small group of meaningful connections online. And so they could potentially, you know, I've had clients have 500 followers on Instagram and they end up selling out like their, their coaching program for them the next month, or they're able to sell their digital product or whatever with a small audience because they've cultivated really meaningful connections versus I've also had people who have 78 thousand Instagram followers and they can't sell a single product, right? And so meaningful connections is so important. And the way to do that, I mean, we could do a whole episode on this, but the way to do that is just to, to be social on social media and not to let the platform or the fact that it's called social media or a specific app make you think that people behind that follower account aren't actually people. And so it's just like the basic rule is to treat people like you want to be treated on social media. And so ask meaningful connections, you know, um, you know, if, if you're following somebody or you accept a follower invitation, even something as simple as just like checking out their profile and then saying, Hey, thanks so much for the connection. Like loved what you had to say about that last post really excited to follow along with you. And you want to mean it, obviously. So if, if it doesn't get you excited, don't say it. Um, but just little things like that, like you would say in real life can go a long way in building up your lead list, potential PR opportunities, like podcast interviews, speaking opportunities. Um, but none of that happens if you just treat people like, like followers, just follower numbers. I, I couldn't agree more. I, and I'm, I'm, I'm so guilty of that. That's something in the last like probably year I've been trying to work on is not just, just constantly posting and posting, but it's developing those relationships because that's so important. I, I heard this quote the other day. I said, don't post and ghost. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious in the yeah. dating world. For those that have never heard ghosting, that's when you don't call someone back. Uh, or I, I think that's what it is, but it, the same thing for social media is like, don't post the ghost, don't post something and get offline, post something. And then when people interact with it, interact with them too. Yeah. Like treat it like a conversation. And a lot of times, you know, we treat our captions like we're on a stage giving a speech. And then it's like, we wonder why nobody is responding to our posts. Well, it's like, we didn't give them a reason or an opportunity to respond. So even just if you have something, you know, you want to share or tips or whatever you're, you're sharing, um, a great way to encourage engagement or conversation is just to ask a question at the end. You know, what would you do or what's your favorite or what are you watching or, you know, and just to like think, okay, what would I do in real life if I was like sitting on the couch talking to this person or to talking to one person? Um, what would I say? Most of the time you wouldn't just, just start giving like a monologue, right? Um, mm -hmm. you would have this conversation. Mm, that's interesting. So let me make sure I got this right. So we have the four C's we've done content connection. Uh, is that right? Yes. And then what's the next one? Okay. I know, I know a lot of people, some of your listeners may not like this one, but the third one is getting in front of the camera. And so if you think about even the people who you follow, you know, what makes you know, like, and trust them? Because at the end of the day, that's what's going to get them to hand over their hard earned money and believe in you and trust you to be their guide, um, to solve their problem, whatever it might be. And it can go, you can, I'm not saying because I know that it, can, I, by the way, if anybody ever says there's only one way to do something or this is the way you have to do it, I would always question that. Um, but with that said, I believe that showing your face and then showing your face and letting people hear your voice can significantly expedite that know, like, and trust process because they're getting to see, again, humans connect with humans. So they're getting to see your face. What does she look like? What is he wearing? Um, what's their mannerisms? What's behind them? Where are they? Um, 
what, you know, what, what do they sound like? And so by the time that they get on a discovery call or join your mastermind or just believe in your product to invest in it or buy into it, whatever it might be, um, that's going to be so much um, more powerful if they know the person behind it and knowing somebody includes seeing them and, and understanding, you know, um, feeling connected in that visual way as well. That was one of the first strategies that I had with uh, being an influencer was getting behind the camera. And it's scary because it <laughs> it's scary to get on there because, hey, people are going to judge you. Hey, they are. It is what it is. But, you know, being in front of a camera, that that's a skill set. And if you if you've ever I don't know if you've seen my YouTube channel, but the very first video I ever did, I, I knew what it was. And I said in the video, I'm not that good. Yet, <laughs> this video is going to be rough, but I promise you, if you stay with me, you're going to see the videos get better, better, and better. And they have. They've got a lot better. And I think that's an important mindset to have is we're not going to be perfect out of the gate being on camera. We're going to make flubs. We're going to have editing errors. We're going to uh, have our hair funny. There's going to be people squawking in the background. But hey, get in front of the camera. Just start putting it out there. Put that content out there. Yes. Oh, Dal, that's such a good point. It's just like, just get started. Um, I have this like post-it above my desk that says like, screw first impressions because so many people are like worried about making the best first impression, like getting perfect, um, being perfect, having the great, having like a great video, having all the tech figured out, feeling super confident. But it's like, how do you figure that stuff out if you don't actually do it, right? Um, I know we're both in James Wedmore's community, and I just love his analogy about swimming. It's like you can read about swimming all day long, but until you get in the pool, you don't actually know what it's like to swim, and you can never get better. Um, and so, yeah, and I also think that people are, people are going to be impressed by the fact that you just had the audacity to put yourself in front of a camera, just to share your opinion in front of everybody, being willing to be judged because that's not something everybody does. So simply by, by having the courage to, to do that, even if it's not perfect and it won't be, um, I think automatically gives you like credibility and it's like, wow, like he's really doing some stuff. And even though it's not perfect and that's going to be so cool to look back and be like, Everybody starts at the start and here's my start. And people, and let me speak on perfection too, because people think that we have to have perfect videos and look here, the thing about, and some background on my business, I, I'm in the studio right now. I have a, a great setup. I have a huge green screen. I have an infinity line of lighting, I have sound of all this stuff. And even though I've invested in, in all these things, what I've <laughs> realized is it's those make a great, perfect video per se, but the videos that actually get the most engagement are the raw videos taken from my phone, <laughs> out on the street, uh, in the car. Those actually get more engagement. So for the people that are thinking they have to have this perfect video, it's not really true. It, it's more of the story you tell and and the the feeling that you're giving the people it doesn't matter what the production quality is no it doesn't and so many times we wait until that production quality is perfect or we we get the perfect mic or whatever and it's just like you just got to do it and i think i think that um you're so right and that you know at the end of the day like our personal brand ironically is not even about us it's about our the people that we want to serve and are excited to help. And so by showing some imperfect moments and being real and genuine and maybe vulnerable, it's like they can see themselves in that versus like something that's perfectly curated. Um, it's a little bit harder maybe to resonate and relate to that. So I, I'm not surprised that your people like the, the more raw footage for sure and speaking of you know this is really about them have you ever read the book uh story brand have you ever heard of that i have yes 
I, I, I love that book because can you speak on it all? Are you, do you remember it enough to talk a little bit on story brand and cause you're, what you're saying kind of resonates with that. Yeah. I think the biggest takeaway and feel free to add to this that I got from that book. Uh, and there's so many, like that would be like, that's one of my like top five books for building a brand of any kind. Um, is that you are not the hero. Your client is the hero. You're simply the guide to help them get from point A to point B. And so by making even the stories about you, um, making them actually about them or allowing themselves to see them Selves in those stories or letting them know what's possible for them. But really everything that you share ends up being about the person you want to serve, even when you're talking about yourself. That is spot on. That's exactly what I was going for right there. And I think people are wondering when they get in the front of the camera, do I position myself as I'm the hero? I do everything. I make myself look good. Or do you really position, position yourself as the guy that's saying, okay, in order for you to get from the step A to step B, this is what you have to do. And so I think that that strategy being behind the camera, that might be able to help your context a little bit and adding value. Um, one more here. Okay. So we have content, we have connection, we have camera. What's that fourth C? Okay. The fourth C is one that if you can do, you're going to stand out. Even if you are like playing these others at like a level, like, C or D, um, just showing up consistently is the four C and people may not comment or like every single post, every single email, whatever that you're sharing. And they probably, they definitely won't. I'm not going to say probably they won't. Um, but what they will see and notice is how often they see you and they see you showing up consistently. Um, I've had some of my highest paying clients come from um, LinkedIn who have never liked a single post. Like I wouldn't even know that they were there until they just reached out, but they were, but they had said, you know, I, I see you all over the place. I see you showing up curious, da, 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 da. And so that's the hard part though, because we think that it's not working. We get in our own head. Like this is to me consistent. Well, they all could be, especially the camera could be a little bit of, of mindset weaved into all of that. But like the consistency piece, I think we can get in our own way and think, are, is anyone even listening? Does anybody care about this? Um, what am I doing? Um, you know, I'm tired. I don't feel like doing this. And if you can just keep showing up and I'm not talking about showing up every day, like can, that's not what consistency is. Um, it's just picking a schedule and sticking to it. So it just might be once a week, you send out an email and you're consistent with that. Like you don't have to be on seven platforms showing up consistently every day. It's just where can people expect to find you? right? When can they expect to hear from you and just stick to that? It's like this promise that you're making to them and you're going to keep showing up. And it's, it's so easy to, you know, go, go all out and share all these beautiful graphics and share these photos of yourself and this awesome content and cover all the three pieces of content content and make these connections and go all out. But it's a lot harder to do that. And, and, for more than, you know, three months, six months, a year, just to keep going. Right. And so that's, I think is the true test, um, of the pros is just like, can you keep showing up? It, it, it really is. If you think when you're speaking of consistency, the first thing that came to mind was ironically enough, the TV show Seinfeld. Did, did you ever watch Seinfeld? I got into it towards <laughs> the end. I, I remember, uh, you know, I was young that, you know, that the TV show was on. And I think what made it great is it was consistent, meaning, you knew, I forget what day it was, but let's just call it Thursday, you knew every week on Thursday, that Seinfeld was playing at 8pm. And yeah. so what did we do as a family, we got together on Thursdays at 8pm, and we watched Seinfeld. And we knew if 
and, and it was a great experience. But if you, if you could imagine that if it was inconsistent, it wouldn't have been a great show. Sometimes it shows up on Thursday. I don't know. We get our family together. It didn't show up. What the heck? It would have never got to be as great as it is if it was inconsistent. So thinking about consistency and what the top performers do, gosh, that just makes sense. Yes, uh, I love that analogy. That is so true. That is so true. And you're not going to have like viral, profound pieces of content to share on a regular basis, but just like those little it's like, it's like going to the gym. Um, you can't, you know, you're not just going to go to the gym for four weeks and be in like bathing suit shape. Um, it's like, you're gonna, you're gonna go for a while. Um, you're going to keep it up ideally just so you have like a a healthy lifestyle. And that's why you want to find a schedule that's actually sustainable. It doesn't make sense to do like two a days. (laughs) If you know, like, okay, long-term, I'm probably not going to be able to keep this up. Um, Now I know for specific things, you might be training for something and and that, and that might make sense. But just for this analogy, it's like pick a schedule and a workout routine and a workout schedule that's going to, that you're actually going to be able to stick with and, and, and have that be part of like your, just your lifestyle. It's what you, it's just what you do. Um, And so don't, don't, try and make your life harder. Like if you haven't been posting consistently, don't necessarily commit to, you know, every day, maybe start with that once a week. Um, like the Seinfeld example, right. Um, but just, just show up even, even when you don't feel like it. And maybe you say that sometimes, I don't know if you've ever felt that way, Del. Like I just don't feel like showing up today or I don't know what to say. Um, sometimes you can say that, right. Um, or you can talk about like what you're reading or what you're listening to. It's just, it, it's just the matter of like getting in front of your people, um, coming from a place of service and thinking like, who could I help today by saying this and by showing up? Uh, I think about a lot. In fact, I'll, I'll give you a story that just last week, uh, I, I was sick. I, I caught a little bug from my daughter. Uh, we were talking about this off, off the air and, and I knew that I had a, an interview coming up and it was so easy to cancel that interview, but I knew that it was important for me. It was important for the podcast. It was important for the listeners that, you know, business goes on. And so I, I toughed it up. I sucked it up. Uh, I went from the fetal position to a smiling face and did an interview. And it was a, it was a great interview. Uh, but sometimes we have to dig down deep to get that consistency because I think the life, I think life, I think universe, you know, puts things out there, not, not to, to trip us up, but just to say, Hey, how bad do you want it? Um, and if you push through this, you know, maybe the universe rewards you a little bit more. Yes. Ah, totally, totally, totally. Um, and that I, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit that way too. (laughs) today, Del, we talked about this. I don't know. We have these sick kids running around. Um, but, uh, yeah, it is. Cause you're, you're not going to feel like showing up all the time. And, and that's the difference between the successful and the people who, you know, who do, um, get noticed and get known versus the people who just show up when they feel like it. And also that's like, you know, making promises to yourself and keeping them, you know, when you do work for yourself, um, it is easy to break promises to yourself or to just move things back or to cancel something. And, and, um, you just feel so much more like powerful though, and in control when you do just keep those promises to yourself. And it just happens to also benefit your audience too, and being able to help them. Absolutely. <clears throat> All right. So we got the four C's we have Content, connection, camera, consistency. Um, I think that is an awesome strategy for building your own personal brand. Uh, I, I want to ask you another question here, and I ask all of our, our guests this standard question. If you could turn back time and talk to your 18-year-old self, what advice would you give yourself for reaching your full potential? Oh man, this is such a good one. And this is something that has been on my mind so much. And I'm trying to figure out, you know, how do I, how do I teach this to my own son? But, um, cause it, we, we, it goes away so quickly. 
feel like with with um society and just our peers and that type of thing but it's just like letting go of other people's opinions um it is insane how long i and i'll just speak for myself but i i know i'm not the only one um how long i have let other people's opinions dictate what i do in my life from who i date to what type of job i have to how i do that job to where I go to how I spend my money to what I should want. Um, and I think my advice would just be to like, what, take a moment and just like take some time and it might not come in a moment, but like, like remember to sit with yourself and just to be like, what do I want? What do I really want? And not let all this outside influence dictate what you think you should want. And then go after that, no matter what anybody else wants, or no, no matter what anybody else says, um, or thinks that you should want, because you only know like what's best for you. And it's just crazy to me, like how, like I don't even know half the people that I'm worried about impressing, right? Um, I think Gary Vee talks about this a lot too, and I'm always like, yes, and amen. Why do I care about this? I don't even really like these people, but for some reason, it's just like embedded in us as humans, I think, to want to be accepted. Um, but I've also missed out on some things, or maybe I could have got places faster, or maybe I could have avoided some mistakes, or I don't know, taken the... <laughs> We're going to take the short road um, instead of the long road and figuring it out. So that's a long winded answer, but I think it would just be like listening to, to your inner, my inner voice more than the outside voices. Uh, that that's actually a really great answer right there. That That's some solid stuff, Sarah. Hey, we've learned a lot about personal development through you. Um, where, where can we find out more about you and what you do? Um, I spend a lot of time on Instagram and my Instagram handle is sarahlynn.co. Um, I've also been hanging out more on LinkedIn. Are you over on LinkedIn, Del? Oh, we're am, friends yeah. now. Yes. Yeah, okay. sure am. Um, so I'm over there. And then what I was going to do, um, I don't have it, I don't have it set up yet, but what I'll do after this, Del, is, um, I have a, um, a new LinkedIn training for beginners for LinkedIn for lurkers. Um, that I'm, that I just put out. And if your audience is interested in that, I'll give them like 30% off with the discount code, um, that we can maybe include in the, the show notes. Yeah. We'll, we'll throw it um, in the show notes. I know I could use a little help with LinkedIn cause I don't know what I'm doing over there. Yeah. I think LinkedIn has a lot of fun stuff going on. Um, even though people say it's boring, um, I think there's a lot of potential over there to position yourself as a thought leader and to build your personal brand. So, um, I share, yeah, just kind of how to get, how to dust off your, your profile, which a lot of people just have an outdated resume, um, and how to kind of start to show up as a pro and, and leader over there. So, um, but I'll, yeah, we'll include that in the show notes. I'll get with you after this. Um, Perfect. yeah, I'd love to connect with them on social media. All right. Awesome. Well, Sarah, thank you for uh, coming on to the Upgrade Your Life podcast. There, this was some great content, some actionable stuff. So uh, thank you. Thanks so much for having me, Dell. My pleasure. There we go. We just learned the four C's for developing our personal brand. Content, connection, camera, and consistency from Sarah Lynn. Remember, if you'd like to connect more with Sarah, you'll find some links in the show notes. All right, my friends, that's it for this week. And as always, remember, learn, lead, and live to your full potential.